Hey, YouTube family and GN subs, how are you? Hope you're having a wonderful week. And I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to talk a little bit about asylum. I have some good information that was brought to my attention by you, my GN subs. It was so cool. Mohammed, uh, and then one GN sub who had in the comment, they wanted to know about Matter of Orban. And I'm going to tee that up. We're going to talk about it, something you probably haven't heard, and give you some good practical suggestions uh, on how you can maintain legal status while on a pending asylum in the U.S. Hey, you can get me at hrg at graylaw.com. That's the only way you can get me. We have a lot to unpack today on this issue, so let's get at it. All right, so let's tee this up. My client comes to the United States on an F-1 student visa. While in status, he files for asylum for he and his family. That asylum is pending for 10 years. Two years after he files the application for asylum, he stops going to school. So, in essence, he falls out of status. Eight years later, we get an approval of a labor certification. That's an employment-based petition. So the question that I had was, can he adjust in the United States. Is he still legal? Because remember, he fell out of status on that F-1 student visa. Question, is he still legal? Can he file the adjustment? That's what we're going to explore today. Interesting issue. I'll let you know what happens in that case. All right, so first thing we have to do, let's talk about adjustment. Remember, only three ways to adjust in the United States, 245A, 245I, and 245K. 245A is if you are in legal status, 245i, if you have an application that was filed on your behalf in 2001, you can pay the penalty fee and get the green card. Or 245k, if you have an employment-based petition and you have worked technically for less than six months unlawfully, you can still adjust in the United States. So usually what happens in these asylum cases is if you filed while you were in legal status, let's say on a non-immigrant visa, E2, F1, even B1, B2, you filed the asylum when you were legal, that asylum these days, it's taking minimum five years, sometimes some cases 10 years. And during that pendency, you fall out of status. You know, the question is, can you file under 245A? That's the question, right? So for 245A, you have to maintain legal status. So let's talk just real quickly too. how can one violate their status. Number one, if you enter the country illegally, you have a legal status in the U.S., or if you enter on a visa and you overstay, you have a legal status. Well, certainly, if you enter the country illegally and you have unlawful status, you cannot file under 245A, right? Because you've never had legal status. Let's say you didn't file an asylum. You came with a visa. You overstayed that visa. Now you have unlawful status. Can't file under 245A. So this is kind of a hybrid, right? You do enter legally. You filed that asylum application while you were in lawful status. And now you want to adjust under 245A. I put a link in the description box below with USCIS that talks about unlawful status. Go to it. Check it out. It's very good. But again, I made the issue very simple, right? So we teed up the issue. Let's talk now about matter of Orban. That is the case. So in that case, it was similar to my fact pattern, right? Comes legally to the United States on a non-immigrant visa, files the asylum application while he was in lawful status. Time goes by, has another way to adjust, files under 245A. USCIS denies the adjustment and says, look, he fell out of status. He's not authorized to file an adjustment under 245A. That was appealed to the AAU, and this is the case, matter of Orban. The AAU said, wait a minute, this is only a technical violation because he was lawful when he filed that adjustment application, and it's you, immigration, that's taking a very long time to adjudicate this case. So we're not going to say he fell out of status. It's a technical violation. You can still file the adjustment under 245A. That's important, folks. If you have an asylum application that you filed while you were lawful, it doesn't matter that eight years have gone by, nine years have gone by. If you have another way to adjust, let's say you have an old family preference, fourth preference family petition, brother or sister petition, and you can adjust, adjust under 245A. You may not be eligible to adjust under 245I or 245K. 
you can utilize 245A and matter of Orban to adjust status in the United States. All right, one other issue. So this is CISPA and the applicability and eligibility to file an adjustment for minor children, okay? Now, I've had this issue that has come up. Now, I put a link in the description box below. Click on the CISPA applicability and eligibility for SILES and check it out, all right? So if I am under the age of 21 at the time my parent files an asylum application, my age is frozen for purposes of continuing to be lawful under that pending asylum application. So this is what happens. So I had a child who was 19 years old at the time his parents filed the asylum application. 10 years later, he's 29 years old and that application is still pending. His age is frozen and he can use his asylum status provided that they filed when the entire family was in lawful status. That child can continue to use that application to file the adjustment under 245A. So let's say the child has a labor certification, not even in connection with the parent's case, right? And now he wants to file his adjustment under 245A. Guess what? Because the asylum application is still pending, he does not have a status violation for technical purposes, he can file adjust in the United States and gets the green card. All right, YouTube family and GN subs, thanks so much for watching Grand Law TV. Please share my content, share my channel with all of your family and friends so we can have more GN subscribers. I appreciate you and we'll see you next time.